All right. So I've been here almost uh, almost three years. It'll be three years next week. And I was trying to remember, maybe somebody can tell me, I don't think I've uh, taught on fasting. I mean, I've, I've mentioned it in sermons, but I don't think I've done a whole sermon about fasting in the past three years. I Ed's agreeing with me. I haven't done that. Well, today we're going to talk about fasting. And when I mention fasting in personal conversations, I get the look. Do you know what that look is? <laughs> that look is, yeah, I, I don't want, I don't want, I don't want fast facts. I get that, because fasting is not easy. But the title of this message is called The Fast Way to Health. And I want to read you uh, something that Jesus said. So we'll go to the next slide. We'll kind of read along together here. In Matthew 6, 16, Jesus said, And if you fast, don't make it obvious, as the hypocrites do. For they try to look miserable and disheveled, so people will admire them for their fasting. I tell you the truth, that is the only reward they will ever get. What did I get wrong there? Exactly. It did, I read, and if you fast... Jesus was talking to a group and is preaching to a large number of people. And he didn't say if you fast, he said when you fast. So I did a little research on this. I said, well, so he was expecting that people would fast, right? That's why he said when, not if. Today I would say if, because our culture does not practice fasting. In Jesus' time, people would fast usually two days a week, not back to back two separate days. They would go without food. Now, back then, they didn't have the option to fast television or social media or spending money on, you know, things that you really don't need each day on the way into, you know, back and forth work, whatever. Now, the, the culture was around God, family, hard work, and one more thing, food. So fasting in biblical time was giving up what? Food. So, so we're clear. I'm, I'm going to talk about fasting in a, in a modern way as well as, as, as in biblical times. But I want you to never forget that the Bible in which I preach out of is the what? The living word. It is the bread of life. It's always fresh. And if we look at different things in the Bible that we're learning for our situation today... I believe that fasting is a fantastic thing that we can apply to our life in our culture now, and it will make you healthier, wealthier, and more spiritual. Now, it's not about trying to achieve like you know this this level of, of like high spirituality. No, but I want you to read the second part. So we'll go to the next slide again. Just follow me. Here it is again. But when you fast, comb your hair and wash your face then no one will notice that you are fasting, except who? Your father, who knows what you do in private. And your father, who sees everything, will reward you. So, is there a benefit to fasting? I believe the proof is in what Jesus said. God will reward you. What reward are you looking for today? Are you looking for... Um, some answers of direction in your life? Are you looking for some more self-control? Are you trying to be healthier? God wants us to exercise self-control, but if you ever want to put yourself to the true test to see how much the flesh will rise up and its voice that is very loud and its intentions, which are often not perfect, will fight against your spirit, give up food. N nothing else. You give up food and you only drink water, and by the end of the day, what's going to happen? Your flesh is going to be angry with you. Second day, your flesh is going to be trying to manipulate you into giving up on this fast because it wants what it wants. So if, if your stomach has so much power over your actions, then... That's something that every so often you should put in check. I have to do it for myself. I've gone on three-day fasts 
more times than I can count. I usually do it twice a year. And each time, it's not easy. It, it wasn't easy the first time. It wasn't easy, you know, the tenth time. But what I do from a personal, you know, count is I just decide that I'm going to set three days aside, not just to resist food, but in order to take time to pray to God for specific things. And I, it's not a wish list of like, God, I need this, I need that. No, it's God, I want more of you in my life. That's, that's what I want. I want to grow closer to you. Not my will, God, not my wish list, but your will. And I'd like to know that better. And God, if I feed my spirit on prayer time, reading the word, and when I would typically go and get a sandwich or a coffee, instead I go to my knees or I go to a quiet place and I get along with God, I am then feeding my spirit. So it's a spiritual health thing. Number one, next slide. Number one, I fast for spiritual health. And that should always be the number one reason why you fast. You want to have a, a healthy lifestyle of a relationship with your Creator. Now, you can have a relationship, a healthy relationship, without, you know, fasting. Don't get me wrong. You don't have to fast. I would just encourage you, just as though as you grow in your, your faith, you will feel more and more inclined to make time to pray. Would you agree with me? I mean, the more... You get to know God, the steps you take forward in, in understanding the heart of God through His scriptures, you're going to feel more and more like praying. People will come to me often and say, Max, I, I really need to pray more. You know, and why do they say that? Why do you say you need to pray more? It's because prayer helps. Jesus prayed all through the Bible. Men and women, they pray to God because they need God in a relationship with them. So, why not add fasting to that and see if it helps you grow in what you're trying to achieve through prayer? So it's not just fasting. If you give up food, for example, and you just fill your time so you're so busy so that you're not thinking about food, you missed it. The whole idea is to be in close relationship with God. So Jesus, he's preaching to the people, and they know what he's taught. They, they, they already fast. According to history, about two days a week. They also gave 10% of their money. They, people would come to Jesus and say, I fast two days a week, and I give 10% of anything I earn. So I'm a religious person. I sacrifice for the God who I cannot see, but I have faith in. And Jesus would say, but when you fast, don't go around just trying to make yourself look like you're all, you know, starving and it's so hard. No. He said, do it in a secret way where you're only your Father in Heaven knows and He will reward you. That's the key. Don't come and, and brag about how, you know, you fasted for this long and it was... You can testify by what to what God did in your life, but it's it's it should be done in such a way that no one around you really knows. All right, let's keep going. Number two, Hosea four six says, "My people are destroyed from lack of knowledge because you have rejected knowledge." I don't want you to go through two thousand fourteen and say, "Well, I go to that church over there in Newton, but you know I." I don't really have a full understanding of a personal relationship with God yet at the end of the year. I hope I, I do a good enough job so that you will have the knowledge that you can connect the dots on how you can personally feel more of God in your life over 2014. Whether you've been a Christian for a long time or you're here today and you're just kind of feeling this whole thing out, you're not even sure if you believe in God. I hope I'll, do, I'll serve you well and do my very best to present truth and knowledge so that you are not run around with a lack of knowledge. People get destroyed, in the, even in the world, with a lack of knowledge. You know, the, you know, the young person, you see him, he just keeps getting in trouble. He, he can't under, seem to remember the laws of the land, so he gets in trouble all the time. 
I don't want you to get in trouble all the time, but you know, when you, when you start to grow up, you, you know the law of the land. You're not getting pulled over by the cops every week. Things, you know, you start to mature. But don't go through life missing out on the most beautiful gift that God wants, and that's a personal relationship with you for a lack of knowledge. So how does that relate to fasting, Max? Well, I found that we like things to come our way as quickly as possible. We always want more. We always want better. And we can never seem to get enough. The number two thing, and this I'm only going to spend about two minutes on because it's not the main focus, is number two. Another key thing for fasting is you can have a financial fast. Uh, you may say, Max, I've never heard of this. Where are you going? Well, there's, a, there's an epidemic with people my age and younger in America. They spend everything they have, and they go out and get as much credit as they can get, and they spend all that. And then they cry out and they say, how did I get myself $20,000 in debt, $40,000 in debt? It's because the flesh wants what it wants, and it wants it now. It doesn't want to save up for the new item. It wants to take out credit, pay a bank for the next so many years, so that they, they're getting their, their money, and so you get that item. Now, I'll be clear. Education, if you know that you need a college degree to get, or any kind of education to get the job you want, that to me is not debt. That is a step, you know, to get what you need. That's an investment. There's a difference between debt and investment in my, my book. You need a house, as long as you buy within your means, that's an investment. It's different. I'm talking about credit card debt and just spending your paycheck as soon as you get it on too much stuff. So one thing that I, th I would say to young people, again, they didn't have this kind of stuff in the day. If you got yourself in debt in biblical times, you became a slave. We do not believe in slavery in the United States, but it wasn't that long ago that things changed. Thank God they did. And today, you're not a slave to some slave owner. You become a slave to some credit holder. All right? So stay away from that stuff. And if you need to take a, a three-day fast from spending on things that are extra, that you don't, you know, you need gas for your car. I get that. You need to pay your light bill. I get that. But you, some young people, they spend way too much. Let's keep moving here. Physical health. Third one. Dr. Hubert Shelton said, Fasting is the best way to maintain good health, eliminate pain and disease, reduce and control weight, and ultimately prolong life. I've read a number of books over the years on fasting for health reasons. Some read by, written rather by Christian doctors, some written by physicians. They all agree on this that your body needs a rest. If you have a car, and you take the car to get an oil change, besides draining the oil and putting new oil in, what do they change? The filter. Thank you. They explain it like this. Your body has filters. Your lungs are filters. You know what's a big filter? Your liver. And if your liver never gets a break, it just starts recycling Everything around and around, and all the toxins that we breathe in, that we eat, the preservatives and such, your liver gets so weighed down, it just can't do its job. What happens when your liver, liver is full of, of the toxins that we get from the preservatives and, and the, the things that we breathe in? Your metabolism goes way down. Your immune system, not, not maximizing. Headaches, you're just circulating the junk around. So fasting helps to clean out your liver. That's just a side note. I'm not here to, to primarily talk about financial health or physical health, but I will say that these things, they do, they're proven to help. All right? Get self-control in how you spend your money and get self-control on what goes in your mouth and you'll be a happier, healthier person and we'll get to enjoy you for many, many more years. Lord willing, amen? Amen. amen.
There's no promises in life, but there is, well, I shouldn't say that. There's one promise. Jesus said, if you put me first, if, if, you, if you believe in me, you'll have everlasting life. Now, it doesn't mean that you're automatically going to get, you know, this life that just everything seems to work out for you. That's, that's not it. This life is very temporary. But, back to Hosea, he said, you know, my people, God's people, they suffer. Why? Because of lack of knowledge. So study up on this, this incredible thing God gave you, your body. Study up on it. Study up on how to manage your life better. These are, this is wisdom that God would, would bless. All right, let's keep going. Fat, sick, and nearly dead. There's a documentary that a lot of you have watched. It was actually somebody here that told me about it. I watched it, and it is a moving documentary. Fat, Sick, and Nearly Dead is about a man from Australia, and he had a disease that doctors could not cure. His, he gained a lot of weight very fast. He was taking hard prescription drugs that would certainly make his life short. But what would happen was, he would be in a, just at work, He'd be at home, didn't matter where he was, and his body would start to inflame like it was being attacked by all kinds of, of bees or something and having an allergic reaction. He would swell up, and it would, it would itch so bad, it, it just the pain was unbearable, he said. He went to doctor after doctor. He was a very wealthy man. He had the best of the best doctors, and they could not figure out how to stop it, other than to just hold it back a little. When it, when it came on, he had more drugs to take. So, in the beginning of this documentary, he takes out all these pills. He says, I have to take these every single day to try to fight off this, this reaction, but sometimes it still doesn't work. So what happened? He got really depressed, and he was going, he, life was going bad. So he decided, I'm going to come to America. I'm going to take 60 days off of regular life. And I'm not going to eat anything except fresh juice from vegetables and some fruit. And he did this for 60 days. And, and he was healed. He, the doctors couldn't understand it. But he, re, he, he says he rebooted his system in such a way that his body didn't have to go through any of these talks. He, his body had a break. He got a little bit of nutrition through the juice for 60 days, and his body was healed. Now, here's, here's the most amazing part of this, this story, is that he's at a truck stop, and he's got the hatchback of his rental car with the battery that hooks up to his juicer to power it. And this man walks by. He's 429 pounds. He's a truck driver. And he says, what are you doing? I say, hey. He goes, hey, I'm making juice. You want some? They strike up a conversation. These two men had the exact same disease, the sickness, that hardly anyone in the world has. What are the odds of this, these two men, one from Australia, one a truck driver at a truck stop, having this conversation? This guy says, well, I've done a lot of research. I believe I need to give my body a break, and it will heal itself. And I'm here doing a documentary. I've never made a documentary in my life. I hired a couple people to help me make it. And I'm interviewing people across America about what they think about food and nutrition. And the guy said, well, that's nice. All right, I'll see you later. The guy said, whoa, whoa, wait. Here's my phone number. If you ever want you know, to contact me and see how it worked out for me, please give me a call. <clears throat> Didn't hear from him for a, for a long time. The guy's back in Australia working. This truck driver, 429 pounds, whose wife has left him with the kids because he can barely walk, he's out of control, but you know what, he's so depressed because he's, his body's freaking out on him all the time. I mean, he is in hell on earth, and he can't get out, no doctor can help him. So what he does is, he calls the guy in Australia, the guy in Australia says, I'm gonna buy a plane ticket today, I'm coming to see you right now. This man paid his own way, comes to, and he said, let's go for a walk and talk. He's got the camera crew. 429 pounds, he could barely walk down the street. He had to keep taking breaks. He goes on this, this juice fast. At the end of the documentary, there's a picture, there's, there's footage of this, this once very large man, much thinner now, 
back with his kids, running down the streets. I brought a tear to my eyes. I just gave away the ending, but I want you to watch it anyway. <laughs> It's a beautiful, beautiful story. But I'm not here to talk again about physical health as much as I am about your spiritual health. Because many people in America are spiritually fat, spiritually sick, and spiritually near dead because they have everything they need. We have everything we need in America. So we don't make much sacrifice for God. That's the truth. People will tell me, oh Max, I I really want to, you know, serve God in some way, but I'm just too busy. Well, I, I know a lot of busy people, but if you, and, and sometimes that's a legit statement, but if that's how you are year after year, something's wrong. We're, we're, we're too fat. I mean physically fat. I'm, I'm trying to lose some weight, by the way. But, but we, were, we just have so much. And I think if Jesus was here, he might have a problem with this. We're spiritually sick. We, we will pray to God, but fasting God for... You grow closer to that. I mean, that requires more than, than an hour, an hour here or there. That requires some suffering. And I don't know if I want to suffer. Jesus Christ suffered for your sins. And that is what gets me through a fast. I rem remind myself, whenever I want to go and take a bite of something or a, a drink something other than water, I say, Jesus went to that cross for me. I think I can avoid this temptation right now. It's, I break it down into pieces and I just say, that's the main thing. Keep the main thing the main thing. When Jesus is teaching about fasting, as we read in the beginning, he said, your father who sees what you do in secret, secret, will reward you. What, what? I, I have to believe that if you combine prayer and fasting, that you will grow closer to God. I'll close in just a minute. Charles Finney was a, a powerful, successful evangelist. He would walk into a place and people would just start falling down. The presence of God went with this man in a way that was modern time supernatural. He walked into a factory once where everybody's working and the machines are all buzzing and, you know, not the kind of place where you're typically holding a revival meeting or church service. And he walked in and people just, they couldn't work. They started falling down in the spirit, in the presence of the Holy Spirit. Now, was Charles Finney the Holy Spirit? No. But the Holy Spirit was so powerful in that evangelist that it was felt by people without him even laying his hands on them. Revival broke out. Communities were changed, but Charles Finney said this. He said, whenever I get ahead of myself and I start going out and preaching and teaching and praying for people without taking time to get along with God and get power from on high, I go, I preach, nothing happens. This man who knew the Word of God better than most people, this man of God who believed in God, more than most people, would go and preach and nothing would happen. People would come, nice job, see you later. But when he would be in prayer and fasting and seeking what he called power from on high for days before he would go and preach somewhere, it was supernatural all over the place. It wasn't a show. It was God working in the hearts of and minds of men and women just like you, just over in western Massachusetts and upstate New York. I'm not talking about in a foreign country, I'm talking about someplace you and I can get the car and get to in a few hours. Not much different than here. Power from on high. Now, he was called to be an evangelist. You may say, Max, I don't need that kind of power. I'm not called to be an evangelist. I want you to, to receive the warning and take the, the opportunity to be rewarded by God, but the, the, the warning is, 
are we spiritually so fat that we are just going to sit around for the rest of our lives and just and pray and, and attend church things? Or are we going to get serious with God and say, God, I need some of that power from on high to help me with my family, to help me with my health, to help me with my urges that seem out of control, to help me, God, to be a better person, whatever it may be. Oh, I want us to be a church that seeks God with all our heart so that we can be the best blessing we can to one another and to those we encounter. You'll read through the Bible. You'll see Daniel fasted, Esther fasted, Moses fasted, Paul fasted. The most important is Jesus fasted. And there are times when people fasted alone, just like Jesus was talking about. And there's other examples in the Bible where people called call the fast for the people because they were, they were going to be attacked. Something bad was about to happen. And they call the people and say, God, please protect us from our enemy. And God will come through. I'm going to ask you to stand this morning. And this is how we're going to uh, wrap up this morning's service. I am going to encourage you to be open to some sort of fasting. Uh, I always have to say this, though. If you're going to give up food, it means you really have to take some more time off of work. And you can't be driving. You can't put yourself in a situation where you don't have enough strength. And you should never go more than three days. I'd start with one day. Work your way up. But don't do more than that. It can be very physically dangerous. you got to work your way up. If you want to talk more about that, please reach out. I'd, I'd love to talk to you more about that. But I'm going to ask you this week, maybe it is that you're going to give up food for a day. Maybe it's that you're only going to uh, drink juice for a day. Maybe it's you're going to do that financial fast. You have no Starbucks on the way to work. Uh, no ordering stuff on Amazon after work. Maybe it's social media. Maybe Facebook is dominating your mind and God wants to give you some creative ideas on how to be, you know, be, be more successful and maybe, maybe Facebook's just in the way. Maybe you fast Facebook for a day or TV for a day. Maybe some of these things you do for the week. But I want you to think about is your flesh steering you in the wrong direction. Because if it is, I want you to know God, He wants to steer you in the right direction. Amen. You have to use wisdom. If you're on medication, you have to stay food. I get that. That's why I'm giving you lots of different options here. I don't want anybody coming back and say, Max, you know, I threw out my medication and I haven't eaten for 40 days. I mean, you, you could be, you could really be in you know, a life-threatening situation that way. No. You gotta just take it one step. This is about spiritual growth, okay? This is about you saying, God, I want to know you better. And in 2014, I don't want to have the patterns uh, go on and on as 2013. I want to get a hold of, of, of life better because your word says that I should have self-control. And I don't feel like I have self-control in certain areas. So God, help me to have that self-control. Let's pray. God, I pray for each person today that they would be open to giving up something, not just to get something, but Lord, to grow closer to you. May that be their goal in all of this. May they all grow in their understanding of you and, and how much you love them and how much strength, inner strength, you have placed inside of each one of them to resist temptation. But God, without you, I think we're fat, sick, and nearly dead. We need you, Lord. Help us, Lord. We want to be healthy, in shape. We want to be alive in our health. And God, we want to commune with you better than we ever have in 2014. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We're going to uh, open up the altars in just a moment to have some, some personal prayer time, but uh, otherwise I'm going to dismiss you. I just want to say that this before you go. This wasn't you know, the most uplifting message. I mean, nobody wants to be told in our culture what to do, especially when it requires 
sacrifice, and giving up. All right? I get that. But I'm out of obedience. I'm delivering to you what I have felt placed on my heart for a couple of weeks now. To confirm that, I have a very close friend in Germany. That person said, Max, would you fast with me in my church this week in 2014? That came last Saturday night confirming that this Sunday I would do that. Then, after last week's service, I didn't mention fasting last week. It, it wasn't about fasting at all. Someone here, someone from our, our prayer ministry group on, on, the, on a Thursday night comes to me and says, Pastor, now this person never does this. Says, Pastor Max, you do what you want with this, no pressure, but I really feel like the church is supposed to start a fast next week of some sort. So there's two confirmations. I felt in the spirit. Someone from Germany asked if I would join in with this. And then someone who prays here on Thursday nights for all of you came to me because that person felt led by the Holy Spirit. That's a confirmation, and I received that. So I pray that this week you do something in private and you grow from it. And oh, I think you're going to really be happy that you made a sacrifice here and there. Amen? Amen. Amen. God, I pray for each one. You know them well because you created them. I pray, Lord, that they always look to you for guidance in their life, for strength in their life. And this week, Lord, I pray that they just take a step, just a step in exploring what fasting could do for them. And may they be blessed. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. If you want prayer for anything, I'm asking uh, my prayer team to come on up here. We're going to... Uh, pray for people. I have some oil up here if anybody's suffering their human body. When we're praying for those aches and pains, maybe you can stand in for somebody else who can't be here. But otherwise, have a wonderful week, everyone. We're short staffed today, so thank you for your understanding. And uh, Mike, if you can come up here as well. Oh, oh hang on one second. You, you preached it a few weeks ago. Brother Mario preached about fasting a few weeks ago. Ah, this is awesome. All right. Thank you for saying that. Thank you.